Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's July 23rd, 2020. Last couple days I've been working harvesting garlic and shallots and getting those all uh, set up on their curing stands uh, and all. And so I'm really sore. So today I elected to get on a uh, bumblebee, the mini excavator, come down here to the beaver pond and do some work down here on two of the dams and a little bit of work on the chinampas as well. So with the mini excavator, what I'm doing is starting to work on uh, the edges. So this is the edge of, of the upper dam. So to my right, the left of the screen here is where the chinampa is over to the side. But the, uh, the edge of the pond works its way around with the topography that the, uh, and all. And the beaver have gone ahead and built, created a beautiful dam on, on uh, right here. So this is the upper dam. It drops down about three foot in elevation, some places five foot in elevation. Uh, but the beavers have been working on this for several years now and uh, they maintain this dam quite, quite well as well. I thought the beaver was just there a minute ago, but it wasn't. And uh, so what I'm doing is knocking down a lot of the brush, opening up the area some, and making an excess road so that I can get out here and work along in here. Uh, and during the video, I've got my helmet cam on, and and I explain how I'm how I'm trying to create the dam the same using the same materials and the same uh, techniques as what I've been observing the beaver uh, do. So the beaver basically use hula culture systems, in other words, using earth covered wood. Uh, this whole property is basically uh, gravel in this area. Down here at this low elevation, it's all sand at the base in, in the areas that I'm working on right now. So when I'm digging down in there, first there's the, uh, the sediment, which is quite thick, probably over a foot uh, deep, uh, rich, beautiful black soil. And there's all of the, uh, the, the trees uh, that have been cut off and it all undulates. The whole surface underneath this water isn't like a base of a pond. It's, it's where the be beaver have gone through, taken down all the trees in a forest, dropped them down there. So it's a, a meshwork of all of these trees underneath that area that have been decomposing over the last few years. And then we've got the stumps with their radial roots going out to the sides. And so what I'm trying to do is work my way through here, knock down the trees and the bushes that are in this area, being careful with all of the spikes that are sticking up because there's lots of, of small trees and bushes where the beaver come through every season because there's regrowth every year. This is such rich, beautiful soil. Lots of poplars, oaks, uh, uh, some, uh, um, well, lots of berry plants, oaks, poplar, uh, maples, uh, ash, cherry trees, lots of a variety of different trees that start up in this area and many different uh, sub canopy layer uh, trees and, and bush as well. So we've got apples and blueberry bushes and many of the blueberry bushes are much taller than me at this point because they've been starved from the daylight. Uh, so what I'm doing is taking all of this material, making sure that I'm getting rid of any of the big spikes that are sticking up out of the ground in this area, covering it all up, integrating root systems, branches, tree trunks, all of that, and excavating out, making this area a little bit deeper, digging out whatever root masses I find in there as well, and building a landing so that I can keep working my way out uh, hopefully every few days, I'd like to come down at least once a week and keep extending the area a little bit each time. The, the ground drops off pretty significantly uh, off of the height of the dam here. It's amazing during this drought how well this pond has stayed right up to this level. And it does leak. It leaks down to the second dam, which I'm also working on as well. So what you see in this video is me with a helmet cam on. You'll see me starting to break into this area and open up the area. I actually uh, penetrate the dam and patch that quickly. Uh, so it, some people like seeing earthworks being done and all. There's a little bit of that to follow as well. Probably about a half an hour's worth. So if you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you think about videos like this, uh, because this will be something that I'm doing in a couple of different locations. And I'm opening up some of the access roads down here in the woods as well. 
So by all means, folks, take good care of yourselves, stay safe, and uh, eat healthy food as well. Bye-bye <laughs> now. Take care. Okay, down by the first beaver dam. Here's the dam out here. I'm gonna see if I make my way to it and uh, just put some of this stuff on the other side of the dam so I can build up a, uh, a driveway around the area. I'll probably only be able to get just a few feet today. So uh, the reason why I can only get a few feet at a time when I'm uh, working on the beaver dam uh, is because I'm excavating uh, water-drenched soil from beneath, from the, uh, the dam, from the pond itself. Right now I'm grabbing a hold of a small tree that a, uh, a beaver had cut off a year ago. And uh, again, the property type that we have here is uh, gravel. And down in this area, it's a great deal of sand. Uh, the two other areas that I'm working on, the Chinampa area and uh, the area that's uh, the lower dam. So this is the upper dam. So this is this pond area here uh, is where the Chinampa is to the left of the, of the screen that we see. So one of the things I've learned over the years from watching the beaver uh, build their dams uh, is that they will incorporate a lot of the woody material uh, into the system. And so on my way in, I'm going ahead and grabbing some of this material. Now, I've got the toothed bucket on, the excavating bucket, which is a narrow bucket. And what I'm doing here is just grabbing some of the small uh, trees and brush and some of the uh, larger stumps as well as we go along I'm going to be taking that material and incorporating that into the dam structure itself. The dam is much stronger if woody material both live and decomposing is incorporated into the dam wall itself. Now, what you can see straight, a, straight ahead of us there uh, is the edge of the dam and to the uh, right of the water that you see uh, going down about the center of the screen, right where the boom is now the, uh, of the excavator, uh, right straight ahead there to the right of that area, which appears all green at this point, is the, uh, is the raised wall of the dam and to the right of that area where I'm pushing material in right now the slope continues downhill uh, and it does undulate the property does undulate but you'd have a really hard time going out and walking that dam wall uh, during the winter months I can do that um, but uh, so what I'm doing here is just uh, using the blade on the mini excavator which is very similar to a small bulldozer and uh, so I'm going ahead, knocking down some of the small trees and brush, laying it down, laying the material on top of it, backing up, and then I'll go ahead and, and see where the root comes out of the ground, and I'll drop the blade again, and then you'll see I'll be pushing those trees further forward as I go through this process. You can actually see it's part of it there, and everything gets pushed. Uh, but as I drop the, the uh, soil over the surface of it, as I lift the blade, that helps to hold some of that brush down as I'm doing this. And the further I go, the further downhill I am going uh, as I'm moving the excavator forward. Uh, all through this area where I'm driving over right now are like wooden stakes, sharpened wooden stakes from where the beaver come through each year and they rebuild the wall. So there's lots of poplar uh, in this area and there's some maple and ash and some oak, some beech, uh, lots in, and lots of berry uh, bushes and trees, blueberry bushes as well. That's a blueberry bush right there on the left that I'm just passing. So as I 
knock down the material here, I'm always grabbing more and more woody material to incorporate into the soil that I'm going to be excavating out of the, uh, the pond itself. So this is the ground level right here that the, it's just at the, the top level of the, of the pond water. And so now I'm just going to go ahead, and this is a little bit dangerous because I can open up the pond when I'm doing this. But it's much easier if I don't have the trees and the brush along that edge uh, when I'm trying to dig down and excavate out all of the stumps, all of the small uh, chopped off uh, trees that are throughout the whole pond area out there. So now I'm grabbing some of this material. One of the things they do is in the area, I don't know if you can see it there, but where I just took that brush out of the, uh, from the pond, uh, from the margin of the pond, there are all of those spikes that stick up. So the beaver cut them off there. So they're using live green material to help hold back some of the dead material that they weave in between the live uh, cut off trees and brush and all and then they just pack it with sand and mud. So fortunately in this area this is all uh, sandy uh, soil so this will be relatively good to create a base for me to drive on and all. Now right here I'm going to be actually opening up the dam here and it's an accident but I'm just trying to get some of this material so I can lay it down and drive over it eventually. So I believe I've just opened the dam right there. So now I'm going to grab some soil. I'm grabbing it with the excavating bucket. And I'm just being pretty quick here and just dumping it into the hole. And on the downhill side, I'll be incorporating lots and lots of brush into that area, trying to mimic what the beavers actually do. The beavers just don't work from the pond side. They go back and forth to both sides and, and uh, engineer this system so that they're cutting down material from, it could be 100 feet away, but they'll start off right close and start chopping down uh, the brush. They'll leave it probably about two feet above ground level. So you have all these sharp wooden sp uh, spikes going from one inch to eight inches or 10 inches. So in here I'm grabbing some more mud on the surface of the base of this pond and sand below that. Really super sandy in this area. So you can see some of the marsh grasses out in the area where, where uh, trees were taken down and so some of the soil is still wrapped up around the root mass of each one of these trees. And again right here I'm just excavating out both sand and mud and mixing it with all the brush that make up that, uh, that, that dam. If there's an area that's leaking somewhat, uh, the beaver will be right in there uh, this afternoon or this evening and starting to patch up areas uh, as I uh, do some damage. It's amazing how quickly they can uh, get in there and do repair work as, as I go through the system. So again, just scraping along the base, trying to grab as much as I can. When I tilt the bucket all the way up, uh, I make water flow out the backside, try to dump as much water out as possible. I wasn't as successful that time. Now, as I'm getting more and more of that sandy and uh, muddy material, I'm gonna keep repositioning the wood so that I can get it down low so that ultimately I'm creating a, a, an access road alongside of the margin of the beaver dam. So that way I'll be able to work out on this system and actually plant uh, beds out in this area. I can grow wildlife food. Uh, I've thought about growing rice <laughs> before but uh, time does not allow me to do that at this point. So again, there are a few rocks in this material but not lots of rocks. Now, one of the things I'm trying to do, uh, where the, the window or doorway that you see me uh, able to see the, uh, the boom, uh, the arm of the excavator right in front of me, and I'm pouring water out of the bucket there, out of the backside, trying to get as much out as possible, so I get as much uh, sand and mud and rocks in there as possible. 
So I just keep working it, adjusting things around, trying to get as much material on top of it as possible. Uh, so I'm going to lift up the blade for a second, back up, and see what I'm going to do next. I don't actually recall. Yep, still grabbing more and more soil. There is a big rock down in there that I keep hitting every once in a while. Again, trying to dump out as much water as I can. Come back, dump soil in there. A little too much water in those bucket loads, but it's working. Okay, so you can see that maple there that I just pointed to. I have to be careful that I don't damage the roots of that maple tree. And it's kind of hard to, to not damage the roots of the maple tree when I'm going uh, with the direction of digging that I'm doing right now. Uh, the roots typically go out in a radial faction, uh, uh, direction away from the trunk of the tree. There will be more roots, uh, heavier roots, uh, going toward the, uh, the, the, the wind load side. So the winds come out of the west here, so there will be more big uh, uh, roots going out towards where the excavator is right now. So I have to be real careful, and so it, once you're used to using the excavator, you can sort of sense and feel as soon as you get some resistance as you're dragging across the base. So I'm trying to be real careful there not to damage the base. I'm grabbing the root ball of uh, a, a blueberry bush right there. I'll push that right down into the mud. So by incorporating the, uh, the superficial um, roots of small uh, trees and bushes into the muddy material and pushing it right down in there, and along with the woody material that's there, that really helps to stabilize the soil that I'm bringing in there. So I'm bringing that material. Uh, if there's, like this, this one here, I'm going to set to the side because that's the one that the beaver cut off and there's a sharp spike there so I'm going to push that to the side because it isn't deep enough in this particular location for me to put that down there to help uh, hold back more and more soil. So I'm going to drive up on here for right now. Again it's very very soft but this will allow me to position. I put my blade down so that I've got the excavator pretty much stabilized. Now I can reach out in this area and dig some more Right in this area, I'm getting lots of mud right off the bat and some of the subsoil plants and material, the decomposing wood that's in that area. So that goes right up against the margin itself. Lots and lots of mud right there. There'll be lots of sand that comes in a minute because as I scrape off a lot of the mud that's on the surface of the base of the pond, all that sediment that's been working in there, uh, that material, I'm going to go ahead and tilt the bucket a little bit more, dump some more of that water out, and dump the soil right where we want it. All of this sandy and muddy material will work its way right down in between all the root material. All the fibrous tissue in the uh, in that uh, little island of uh, plants that'll help to help hold things together temporarily. So it's like little threads holding a lot of the sand and mud. Otherwise that sand would just gradually work its way right downhill and I'd get stuck in it every single time I come out and try to go f uh, further forward. You really want to have, uh, it'd be ideal if I could get maybe two-thirds to three-quarters uh, sand to uh, one-third to uh, one-quarter to one-third uh, mud, which really makes a pretty good foundation that holds up over time, uh, and that material being interlaced between all of the uh, woody and brush material that, uh, that I'm actually working with right here. There is a stump out here that I'm trying to get at as well. There's, there's a couple of trees in the water here that you can't see right now. But uh, as I get these bucket loads, I'm going to get that material in there. Invert the, the uh, weeding material, put that towards the base if at all possible. Dig right down in there nice and deep. So right now I'm going 
uh, out by the uh, the little island of marsh marshy material there I'm only going down about two feet right next to the extent of where I'm reaching out there I'm only able to dig down maybe uh, 24 inches deep I'll be digging down deeper and deeper in the area that I'm in right now down getting lots and lots of sand that will go on top of all of this material now the water is going downhill as I'm depositing all this material a lot of the sand and mud uh, drops you know because of the weight of it drops right down and sifts in between all of the brush and uh, uh, marshy uh, plant plant life there and uh, the waters going down and on the right side there is the lower pond so there's another beaver dam that I've been working on gradually down a little bit further but this is my first day of breaking through into this upper uh, beaver dam so I love having as many rocks as possible there is a boulder that I uh, keep scraping over you'll see the boom start to uh, do a little bit of a hesitation and jump so I've got to work the soil down there and see if I can grab that boulder here in a couple of minutes so there are times when there's going to be quite a bit of water here I always wonder what the beavers thinking when when I'm in here working like this so I just hit that boulder just then Is the beaver just in hiding or is he back there someplace watching me? I know that when I go out here in the winter time, he's often watching me. Now this, these dams used to get much lower every season, uh, but this is this season. It's just amazing that uh, the water level uh, during the time of this big significant drought, drought is right at top level especially considering this whole base is naturally sand and gravel. Now I'm going to be grabbing more and more sand down in here and try to get that get on each side of that boulder that's down in there and hope that it's one that I'll be able to grab a hold of and bring up. doing this work uh, you get completely occupied so I oh, just I bumped off that there. boulder again with what you're doing and trying to see what material how much of the woody material that you want to bring over into the area how much sand and all so basically I'm doing layers as you can see I put a lot of brush down and laid down a lot of the, the trees and brush material that was right there so I keep hitting that rock so I'm digging on either side and just trying to gradually see if I can break it loose from the ground down below. I think I just turned it. So. see that jump a little bit you can realize that what I'm doing is I'm bouncing off of that rock not getting much soil now I'm near the that tree so I'm just grabbing superficial material here and again that's more of that uh, marshy material that I want to go ahead get down and get that uh, that green material that's fibrous incorporate that into the uh, into the uh, sand and mud that I'm getting here. All that fibrous root material that I've laid in the um, way, fo par way forward of the bucket when I get back over there again. Uh, I'm feeling where the roots are and trying not to damage them. Lots of fibrous material, small roots in this material. 
So I'm trying to cover up a lot of that bigger brush. So those, when I say that root material right there, hard to see, but that's those are small trees that the beavers have come through and made stakes out of them. So, and you see just how soupy all this material actually is. And just trying to get an idea of the, the level of it right here. And uh, looking around, trying to decide, am I gonna try and move forward and get some more of that material up in there, or am I gonna keep digging down in here? Now, I'm gonna grab, I want more fibrous material, so I'm going over here. Gotta be careful where the roots are there, not dig those up. So this is the entrance to the beaver uh, pond, right there. I need more fibrous material with lots of intact roots in there and put that down as part of the base over some of these trees. And then I can put more sand and material on it. So I'm holding down that log with the, um, with the blade of the mini excavator. Push that material down. So it's it's multi-layering. It's 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 like uh, creating a lasagna when we're uh, trying to create a, a beaver dam wall. They 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 take lots of uh, large caliper material, the trees and trunks and material. Then they take lots and lots of small caliper material. They actually dig up some of the the uh, the roots of some of the the, the areas. So. All along that water edge, the beaver have gone through and they unearthed all of the small trees after they've been there a year or two. They'll dig down, take all the mud that's there, pack it into the wall, and then they'll put a layer of sand on top of that mud, and then they'll put more mud on top of that, and they'll fill every little void in the brush that make up that damn wall. And, uh, you know, <laughs> they have patience. So I'm looking around to see is there any other material on this side that I'm going to want to grab a hold of. And that's a blueberry bush right to the left side of the screen there as I'm backing up some. Now all of this forest floor here uh, is lots and lots of uh, forest uh, woodland material that has lots and lots of small roots interwoven into the uh, into the material. So I decided I'm going to come back here, grab some of this superficial material, drop the blade down. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to disturb the roots of these trees. So I'm just barely scraping the surface. But all of this, the small little plant material here, I'm going to go ahead and push the material forward. Any uh, trees that, that have been dropped down in here or branches that have been broken off, I'm going to keep grabbing and, and just integrate all of this fibrous, uh, rooty material with soil attached to it, and that helps to create a really nice uh, secure base to this whole uh, um, access road that I'm going to be creating here. So that's a really overgrown uh, blueberry bush right there that I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, I'm sorry, that isn't a blueberry bush. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uproot that one in just a second here as well. Just have to change the angle, back up again. See just where I do want to back up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and disrupt the root system on this to make it much easier to pick up since it's pretty darn good size. Again, I'm being careful to just superficially tease out the roots on these plants. And that is an older blueberry bush. I was right the first time. So you see how that fibrous material just all hooks together. So this is part of the forest floor. And that uh, used incorporated with all of the sand and muddy material really helps to solidify everything nicely. So now that I've disrupted those roots, I'm going to back up some and push the rest of this material right up to where I'm going to want it. So again, it's like creating a lasagna layer, uh, taking this really 
uh, rooty or fibrous material, intermixing it with the mud that came from the surface of the base of the pond and the sand which was subsurface of the base of the pond. There were some rocks there so I wanted to rub those over into the area. Uh, the small trees, I'm just going to go ahead and align those. If I can get the trees, I, I always want to lay the trees so some will be going lengthwise uh, in front of the, the excavators and some I'm going to want going perpendicular to the long axis as I drive along. So go ahead and bring up those roots. Back up a little bit, push it forward. And then I can start pushing these forward. All of this plant material needs to get incorporated into this dam material. It's going to break down and create beautiful soil in a few years. And, uh, but all of this material will help to uh, ensure the structural integrity of the dam wall as well. And because I'm uh, digging down so deep in this situation, so I'm going to go ahead and rearrange these ones. These ones I'm going to want to have going lengthwise, going in the excess road. But what I'll do in the future is I'll put layers going perpendicular to the, the long axis of the way that I'm putting these tree materials in here. So it looks like I'm creating a mess when I'm first starting this, but all this material will be compacted down gradually. Any of the uh, really root-laden uh, superficial soil gets incorporated into the surface here. That really creates a good base for me to drive on and work on the next time I come down here. So unfortunately, this is an area that is actually pretty good. The chinampas are very difficult because I'm digging up mud and sand and trying to build a base with just the mud and sand. I don't have the benefit of all this woodland, lowland woodland material that's on the right side of the screen here to be integrating into the base that I'll be driving on. So I'm looking around trying to see do I want to grab more of that woody material yet? And I don't think so. Yeah, I think I've got it. I'm going to need lots and lots of woody material as I advance uh, each time I come down here and, and work uh, progressively forward, trying to make my little access road, which will be a chinampa in the future. Uh, but that's quite some time from now. It's just going to take, this is a very slow process. So I'm actually going backwards right now. The blade is behind us. I always make sure that I lift the blade up uh, fully. Now you see all this green material up in here. I'm going to get up here pretty close. The weight on the back of this mini excavator is really, really nice. Uh, so that it's, it's, uh, there's little waste. I don't have to worry about banging into something. So now again, I'm just tearing off that, that superficial layer of material as I'm working forward here. That really nice, rooty material because that's going to help out an awful lot. I want to be real careful because there's a lot of big, beautiful trees here. I don't want to damage the roots of those trees. I'm lifting the blade a little bit as I'm going through here, so some of the soil is going to fall off right below the excavator in this area. Again, I want to be careful going over these roots in between these two beautiful trees. Who knows, the beaver may decide to come down here and take down these trees. <laughs> it is amazing how quickly they can work their way around in here. So I'm just gradually lifting the blade as I'm working my way down in here, trying to build up a, a, uh, a, t a top surface of the area. Now again, I'm going backwards, making sure the blade is lifted up. 
come back here and see just where do I want to back up to and get a little bit more of that superficial material. And as I'm going here to the right of the screen, right by that small cherry and the maples there, um, there is a an old dead blueberry bush right there that I need to go and get hold of. So those are old dead apple trees to the left of the screen. A couple small trees here. Uh, just want to disrupt the roots. With the teeth it's real nice and easy to do that without destroying a lot of the soil. And I'm going to just go ahead and uh, knock these uh, dead apple trees back. Uh, once they don't get in the sun, they get into the, in, in the woods really start to develop as the forest matures these apple trees tend to uh, not do as well. So, so that's a bit of an issue. Working my way through here. Okay, I'm gonna back up some more. Get some more of these small little seedling trees that are just a couple of years old. Get up close to this cherry, turn around. Want to be real careful, I blew out my back window, which is a uh, curved uh, rear window in these, which makes them very expensive. So once you knock out a window, and it costs you 600 bucks to get the raw materials and a couple of days to uh, go and get it installed, it's it's a real hassle. So I'm always really, really careful. Again, coming up here, I just want to make sure that I'm lifting the blade some, so you see the soil drop. You don't want to disrupt any of these uh, roots of these nice trees. So whenever I'm doing this, I'm always trying to create a decent base for me to get out, to get out onto and trying to make it fairly level, but it will slope slightly to the right. And that's okay. And I'll be lifting the blade some, dropping that material. So by having a tractor machine like a mini excavator, you can see how I can compact down that soil. And this will intermix these, this, uh, the sod that I just pulled away. And I can compact down all of that material. Now I keep turning to make sure that I'm not going to uh, incorporate uh, my window into one of the limbs coming off the trees behind me there. So as I pack this material down, now I can't really pack down that wet material out in front of me. I'll just sink right down in there. If you try to gain too much ground and go too, too much forward, you end up burying the excavator and uh, putting yourself behind. Trying to make a nice, instead of a, a quick step off there, since I took some of the soil out of there, I just want to have this be a real gradual uh, taper and have a smooth base to it so that the, uh, the fawns, when they come down in here, don't uh, injure their, one of their limbs. So it's always trying to create a decent base for them to get into. Is they'll only go 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 down probably to their uh, chest, the uh, the fawns. But uh, trying to make the bases as uh, as little as, as 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 safe as possible because little divots and materials. So I try to use the uh, the back of the bucket, press down on it, so that I'm smoothing out and filling in any voids that the, the little fawns' legs could twist in there. The, the fawns are little babies at this point. Uh, as something startles them when they start getting down in here. So this is a time when mom brings her little babies down in there. Every place, whenever I work down here, and if I go take work in a different spot, the deer will be right in this area while I'm working oh, 50, 60 feet away. 
Uh, they'll be right down here. Put track marks down in here. So they bring their fawns right down. When I was doing this today, I didn't see the buck around, uh, but there's a buck that follows me around all the time, and he'll just stay a short distance from me, uh, which is kind of nice. So there's an old dead blueberry bush there. Now I'm making sure that I'm using the teeth, and I'm going directly away from, not going, uh, uh, I, I want to stay parallel with the roots that radiate out from the tree. And so each time that I'm doing this, I'm pushing back on that blueberry bush root and then pulling forward. And that way I can dislodge it without damaging the roots of the tree. So that material right there will be, when they're sh shallow in height, uh, with their low level, that can be incorporated right into the base out there and help to interlock a lot of that sand and uh, muddy material. So the battery's about to go dead here on the, uh, on the uh, camera, on my helmet cam. So uh, there's only another minute or so here for me to uh, share with you what I'm doing. But again, I'm coming all the way back, getting as close to these areas as possible, dropping the blade, turning around, and dislodging some of this superficial root material here, and just working it forward. I wish it were this easy uh, all the time, but uh, at least it's fairly uh, straightforward when I'm uh, first beginning, working my way out, creating the landing for the, uh, for the access path or access road uh, leading out along the, uh, the dam itself that the beavers uh, build. I'm sure the beaver were here within an hour of me uh, leaving the area and inspecting everything. Tomorrow they'll be working on it as well. I worked on the lower dam wall already uh, just before coming down here. This is a tree that had fallen a few years ago and had been covered up by the soil. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and break it off there. And uh, you can see the root mass to the, uh, now it's actually up on the blade of the mini excavator. Push it to the side, stick it in the dirt raise the blade that allows and now pull forward and that'll get it off of there so I don't have to get on and off the excavator. I'll drop the blade down just slightly in a minute. All that material I'll be coming back and getting to incorporate into the access path around the uh, around the dam itself. 